Nowadays, a lot of turn-based RPGs struggle to create unique and engaging gameplay. Some say this is because of the primitive origins of the genre's battle system. Turn-based battles were technically impressive around the time of their conception, but today there are far more engaging alternatives to combat systems. Various titles have attempted to remedy this issue over the years. Paper Mario introduced action elements into battles by requiring players to succeed in brief minigames to effectively deploy attacks. Other titles innovated elsewhere, such as Undertale, which allows you to dodge all attacks entirely, assuming you can avoid contact with them during the enemy's turn. But there's another recent title that sought a radically different approach to the typical turn-based RPG formula. That game is Kingsway. It's an adorable little roguelike that masterfully uses a Windows 3.0 aesthetic to enhance each of its creative mechanics. One of the most notable examples of this is combat. Battles feature a simple real-time combat system that takes place in a separate window that appears upon encountering an enemy. The window will move about randomly for the duration of the fight, with varying movement patterns depending on the foe. As is standard for most RPGs, battles in King's Way will continue until either one member's health points reach zero or the player flees from the conflict. Each action that the player performs in combat does not happen instantaneously. Unlike games like Chrono Trigger or practically half of the Final Fantasy franchise, you do not have a little bar that has to fill up before you can instantly act. Instead, all actions have a set amount of time before they are executed. You can see the progress of them in this handy dandy bar above your skills. Once you select an action, you are forced to commit to it, so you must choose the right option at the right time. Fortunately, this goes both ways. Enemies also have to charge up their actions before they can attempt to horrifically maim noble heroes such as Eldritch Cramp the Ascended. And get this, that means blocking has a practical function in every battle in the game. After performing one or two attacks, it is best to then block before the enemy can land their attack, and then you can quickly unblock and repeat the process until one of you drops dead or you decide to chicken out. And, because of the delay on unblocking, you can end the block right before the enemy's attack lands. If executed correctly, your character should stop blocking the moment after they get hit, granting you additional time to retaliate. Sometimes this makes enough of a difference to allow you to land an extra hit before the enemy finishes their next attack. It results in a surprisingly fun combat system that requires you to make split-second decisions on the fly, keep a watchful eye on several different elements, rewards the player for perfecting the timing of their clicks, and allows the player to take bigger risks if they are up to the challenge. And I know you might be thinking, well what's stopping me from just spam clicking attack and ignoring everything you just mentioned? Technically, nothing, but I still cannot say I would recommend it. This is because many enemies have attacks that take the form of a pop-up window that you quickly need to close, or else you'll take heavy damage and or gain a negative status effect. When a pop-up window appears, it's already highlighted and on the topmost layer of your windows. As a result, spam clicking on the battle window will cause it to become highlighted instead of the pop-up attack, which subsequently buries the time-sensitive threat. But if you carefully time your clicks and keep them to a minimum, you'll have the best odds of dodging those nasty pop-ups. A few other enemies have similarly gimmicky attacks. The Shadow Bandit, for example, has a chance of minimizing the battle window instead of attacking. However, it's possible to click on the window right as it's being minimized and prevent this from happening at all. Phantoms will minimize a completely random window when they attack you. This can partially be circumvented by opening dud windows to drastically reduce the chances of it minimizing something essential for the fight. These small intricacies help to give enemies unique identities that prevent encounters from blending together, which is another issue that plagues numerous RPGs. There's far more to Kingsway's encounters than just this, however. Upon leveling up, you'll gain a skill point that you can invest in a variety of skills, many of which are unique to the class you selected at the start of the game. These can be passive abilities that boost your odds of dealing a critical hit with your basic attack, or active skills such as Fireball, which deals a bunch of damage to your foe at the cost of some mana. Many of the skills do more than just deal more damage as well. Some inflict status effects like Chill, which reduces the speed at which your opponent charges up their attacks. There's a bunch of skills that give yourself a variety of positive status effects as well. Each skill has a different MP cost, which often increases the more you level it up. Not only that, but they each require different amounts of time to use. Some are fast and weak, others are slow and strong, while some are in between. And Kingsway lets you get super wacky with your character builds. In theory, it's possible to learn almost any skill as any class because of skill books. 
They teach you a random skill, be it a spell, passive ability, or a weapon mastery. This helps mix up runs and prevent classes from having extremely cookie cutter loadouts. On top of all this, you can use items in combat. There are scrolls, which instantly cast spells for free, you can drink a health potion, or a mana potion to continue blasting the enemy with a healthy dose of apocalypse. Another not-so-obvious nuance to combat is that you can switch out your escape, block, and even attack options for different skills, so there's a lot more freedom with your build than it initially appears. Paired with how unique each class's skills are, combat manages to be quite engaging despite how simple it is. Despite Kingsway's numerous innovations, there's still many traditional RPG elements, such as how all characters boast four primary stats, strength, vitality, intellect, and agility. There's also max health, max mana, damage, and defense, which are calculated separately. Strength boosts the damage of your basic attack, vitality increases your health by two per point, intellect raises your magic by one, and agility reduces the time it takes to perform all actions in combat and increases the time you have to close pop-ups. The rest is self-explanatory. Also like many RPGs, there's a bunch of status effects, many of which interact with the aforementioned stats, such as burning, which reduces defense, or chill, which drastically reduces your agility. Leveling up grants three stat points to allocate freely. A large variety of gear can also be equipped to boost your stats, and nearly all of it requires a minimum number of stats and levels to equip. Gear often boils down to one of two archetypes, high defense but no special effects, or mid to low defense with special effects. This is usually the difference between, say, a leather garb which boosts defense by 7, and a robe which only boosts it by 2, but also raises your magical power. There's also boosts that pertain to things aside from magic, such as escape chance, health regeneration, travel distance, and movement speed. Those last two have to do with the overworld, which I'll touch on later. There's a bunch of weapons too, and they follow similar archetypes to armor. Sometimes you can find really strong weapons that also have extra effects, but there's usually some other form of a trade-off, such as rarity and or weight. Archetypes for all types of gear are flexible, for you can find enchanted equipment that comes with a variety of buffs. Some pertain to the main four stats, while others focus on things such as attack speed, crit chance, or magical power. Sometimes they even raise both. Gear can also have curses, which are like enchantments, but they take away from a stat while increasing another one, sometimes more so than enchantments. There's also incredibly rare legendary gear, which is very powerful and usually teaches you a skill while equipped. This stuff is always the same between runs, so if you find a gore maker in one run, it should be the same when found in another. Sometimes you'll find yourself a couple of stat points shy of some piece of equipment you want to use, so it might be in your best interest to equip slightly worse enchanted or cursed gear so you can then use the desired item. This is even necessary if you're, say, a few points of strength away from equipping something, but the item boosts your strength enough to allow you to equip it in the first place. This is because you need to achieve the required amount of strength to use the item before you'll receive its stat bonus. I felt really clever when I figured this out on my own. Kingsway has many cool nuances like this that can be taken advantage of by an observant player. There are other types of gear too, such as shields and orbs which go in your offhand. They raise defense and damage respectively. There are charms that each have unique effects, such as slowing down time or immunity to a status effect. And finally, there are rings, which you can equip two of at a time. Almost all rings are enchanted or cursed, and that's where their benefits come from for the most part. Since rings only weigh up to point two, it's a good idea to keep a bunch of them on hand, on the off chance you're a few stats shy of a piece of equipment you'd like to use. Speaking of which, I haven't even touched on weight yet. As you'd imagine, you'll come across a lot of items on your journey, and the issue with that is you can't hold all of them. After all, hardy giant broadswords of wrath aren't exactly light. All items can only be placed in bags, which act like folders on a desktop. You move items around like files. Also, like files, you can rename them, sort them, and delete them. Or in the case of the beastkin, eat them. Each item has a weight, and you can't put an item in a bag if it would cause the total weight of the items in it to exceed the bag's maximum weight. It sounds a little complicated, but it's just simple addition and subtraction. Also, there's not any kind of weight capacity for equipped items, so don't worry about that interfering with your precious storage. Ideally, you want to hoard as many items as possible to sell to shops so you can buy stronger equipment and or consumables. You can also buy new bags from shops, but they're often really expensive. 
Traversing the overworld is a lot like traveling between nodes in FTL, even down to an approaching threat forcing you to keep moving on. Fortunately, Kingsway is a lot more forgiving in that regard. Unlike FTL, Kingsway's system is not turn-based. Instead, the Sky Eater approaches only as time passes in the game. You can view the time in the bottom right corner of the window, just like an actual desktop and only certain actions will consume time. The most significant of these actions is traveling between nodes. This time can be reduced by equipping items with boost to movement speed, and you can choose to travel between more nodes if you equip gear that boosts travel distance. Other actions also take up time, such as sleeping, which means you should only do so if you're in a bit of a pinch. Combat also takes up a small amount of time, but it's quite negligible and is to prevent cheesy tactics like endlessly grinding enemies that spawn other enemies. Speaking of which, when you travel between nodes in the overworld, you'll often run into enemies which will vary depending on where you are. Many are unique to mountains, plains, forests, water, and dungeons, but a couple of other factors also determine what enemies you can encounter. Lots of enemies have unique drops that are required for quests, so it's handy to know where to find them. After all, completing quests is a great way to get some quick experience and solid gear. There's a bunch of noteworthy locations you can stumble across on the overworld as well. There's caverns, dungeons, outposts and manors, forts, monoliths, and beacons. Each of these has a unique sprite to distinguish between them and regular nodes. Unlike other locations, regular nodes often contain events, so they are still very worth visiting. You could stumble across an injured traveler, a gang of bandits, or a wanderer looking to pawn off a mysterious treasure. If you come across the event where a wanderer is trying to sell you something, you have the choice to steal the item, and what's awesome about this is it's a matter of skill and not luck about whether or not you succeed. When stealing, you can either take the item that's opened up in a new window and then flee from the battle, or you can just murder the wanderer in cold blood to get the treasure plus whatever's on their corpse. It's a bit dark, but that's how the world works. The downside to theft and murder, aside from the possibility of getting you killed anyways, is that it damages your reputation. As your reputation decreases, you'll suffer from higher shop prices, and if it falls low enough, you'll gain the option to attack random wanderers. You can even choose to do so after healing their injuries. Meanwhile, raising your reputation is achieved by completing quests and helping injured wanderers. The only perk to this is decreased shop prices, which is admittedly a bit lame. While reputation is kind of a neat mechanic, I wish it did just a bit more. I didn't mention this earlier, but dungeons and caverns are a huge part of the game. There are unique events, enemies, map locations, and even traps that you can find within them. Traps work exactly like an enemy's pop-up attack, except they can only spawn upon entering a blank node in a dungeon or opening treasure chests. It's honestly embarrassing it's taken me so long to get to this, but the general theming of Kingsway is brilliant. The Windows 3.0 aesthetic is well done and is cleverly combined with each of the game's mechanics. In fact, this is a good time to bring up the gems mechanic. Kingsway is a roguelike. This means you die a lot, and when you die, or win, you get a currency called gems, which is calculated by the number of levels you had at the end of the run. Gems can be spent between runs on a variety of certain gifts, cosmetic unlockables, and shortcuts. The various cosmetics take the form of window themes, different mouse cursors, and different text fonts, which can all be changed in the settings at any time. The shortcuts act as permanent upgrades to all future runs. I say upgrades because these quality of life improvements allow you to do more on the fly, specifically when you happen to be in the midst of a battle. With the main bag shortcut, you could keep all of your bags closed during combat to allow for more screen space to close enemy attacks. Then, as soon as you need an item from your bag, simply press B and it will instantly pop up. The shortcut for opening your character menu is both a wonderful quality of life feature and opens up the possibility of changing equipment during a fight. Although I can't say I recommend doing that even with the shortcut. Still, I appreciate the option. Having fewer windows is made quite advantageous if using the tab shortcut, which acts exactly like the alt tab shortcut. It allows you to quickly switch between windows. If you're quick enough on your feet, it could save you in situations where a pop-up appears and you accidentally clicked on another window. Despite how far we are into this video, I've still skimmed over a bunch of small stuff I'd like to highlight. So here's a bunch of cool miscellaneous details. Kingsway's OST is played via an in-game music player. You can choose which song you want to play at any time. You can't scrub through songs, but that is authentic to be fair. The soundtrack was composed by the wonderful Landon Podbielski, creator of Duck Game. Kingsway has some great sprite work. Every single enemy in the game has a unique sprite, although admittedly some are just recolors. Fortunately, this is usually just in the case of rarer enemies. 
three colors that do exist are at least mirrored as well, which is a small detail that I appreciate. It helps colorblind players to distinguish between the foes more easily, which is already possible via the names, but every little bit helps. The ones that you encounter most often on the overworld have vastly different sprites as they become stronger, such as the skeletons. You got your typical skeleton, skeleton knight, and a skeleton brute! Another nice part about enemy artwork is it provides you with information. Oftentimes, you can tell what items an enemy can drop by looking at its portrait. For example, just by looking at a cultist sprite, you can tell they can drop a cult mask, a half moon dagger, a cultist robe, and a demon ward. So keep an eye out if you're looking for specific items. If you want to look at a particular enemy portrait, there's a handy little bestiary that is updated as you encounter foes, giving you tidbits of lore. Similarly, there's a glossary where you can read up on most of the game's smaller mechanics, such as what each status effect does and what the heck a node is. Both of these can be found in the information tab, which is accessed via the start menu in the bottom left corner of the screen. This is a very small thing, but look at the paper that events are displayed on. If you look really closely, you can see it's slightly digitized, like it's been poorly compressed. Very nice touch. Last small thing, but starting gifts are a cool mechanic that I think other roguelikes should steal. Being able to choose both your class and an extra item to start with is really neat. There's also another mechanic that ties in the starting gifts, which is burying your dead characters. When you do so, you can choose to keep one item from their inventory as a memento, which can then be used one time as a starting gift on another character. That may sound a bit overpowered, but keep in mind nearly all gear has level and stat requirements before you can equip it. Despite how stressful I may have made Kingsway's mechanics sound, I actually find it to be a relatively easy game. There's nothing wrong with that, but what does it have to offer to the masochistic players such as myself? Well, for 200 gems, you can unlock a starting gift called the Ring of Pain. This is how you activate the game's hard mode, which, unlike Terraria's shitty implementation of master mode, does more than just thoughtlessly increase a few numbers by an arbitrary value. Selecting the Ring of Pain as a starting gift will automatically equip it to your character, and you cannot ever unequip it. This means that on top of the effects of hard mode itself, you're reduced to only one ring slot, and you effectively cannot choose a starting gift to give yourself an early edge. Aside from this, hard mode increases the rate at which the Sky Eater approaches by 28%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes a gigantic difference. It results in you having to carefully plan your actions on the overworld, and trying to spend as much time as possible in dungeons due to time passing slower within them. Hard mode also causes you to take 20% more damage, and enemies drop 20% less gold. I think it would have been cool if it made enemy windows move faster and reduce the time you have to avoid pop-up attacks, but honestly, it's still a nice challenge as is. Besides, Kingsway has other options for catering to your masochistic side. Three additional classes can be unlocked by achieving the game's various endings. One of them is called Worthless. This brave fellow starts with a whopping two points in each of their stats, so at the start of a run, you deal zero to one damage until putting a single point into strength. Even if you're lucky enough to get a critical hit this early in the game, if you roll a zero for your attack damage, you will still deal zero damage. And not only that, but they've only got one arm available to them, meaning you won't get weighed down by any of those pesky orbs or shields. Instead, the Worthless relies on their trusty kick ability, which is unique to their class and honestly makes up for all of its downsides once you get past the brutal early game. Kick can be learned as soon as level two, and it allows you to quickly stun enemies for only one MP. Without it, the Worthless would truly live up to its title. However, it fails to solve the issue of the classes severely lacking offense and defense, so don't get too cocky, it's not a run carrier. But hey, this still sounds doable! Let's make the game even harder. There's a lot of text and numbers in Kingsway, so what if you couldn't read any of it? Well, turns out, there's an option for that! The gibberish font, which turns every character into incomprehensible nonsense with only a select few UIs left untouched. Before attempting a playthrough with the gibberish font enabled, I thought it was going to boil down to blindly fumbling through the dark and hoping Lady Luck blesses me with the right cards. I was wrong. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we have pictures! 
It turned into the ultimate test of my knowledge of the game. I had to be able to figure out exactly what events I stumbled across and recall what and where each of the options I had available to me were. There were times when I had little to no way of knowing if I was faced with an injured traveler who was in need of my potions, i.e. wanted to steal one of my precious potions, some schmuck wanting to pawn off an item, which I could optionally steal, or a gang of bloodthirsty bandits looking to beat me up and take my lunch money. It really brought meaning to a bandit ambush. Things got pretty bad when I clicked on a dialogue option and then I was presented with another choice I didn't expect to appear. I find that the panic you experience increases exponentially as the game presents you with more choices in a row. Oh, but nothing compares to the terror of a traveler asking to buy a piece of equipment from me. It could be any item I have on hand, even my equipped weapon or an essential piece of my armor, and I would have virtually no way of knowing. It turns this event from a friendly exchange of goods into a malicious act of theft. Losing something essential like that is a very good way to get yourself killed, especially if you're completely unaware of the fact you just did so. It's not great to take on a boss, only to realize you've boldly walked up there stark naked. And oh, that's not even all of it. Just equipping gear is a challenge now, because you can't view what level you need to be or what stats you need to wield the item. In fact, you don't even know what level you are, what stats you have, or how much gold you're carrying. Because of this, it's essential you know the general requirements for the equipment you want. If you want a battle staff, you better remember it requires 21 strength and 19 intelligence to equip. Fortunately, there is some mercy in this bonkers challenge. All items and bags and notifications are completely unaffected by fonts. This means that you can at least get some idea of what stats are being boosted by enchanted items by looking at their names. For example, deft items always boost agility, so if you want more agility, prioritize gear with deft in the name. There are also secondary enchantment names such as Fury or Warding, which do things like boosting critical hit chance or magical power respectively, which are also worth remembering. Another merciful part of this challenge is that skills each have an icon associated with them, so as long as you remember which picture corresponds to which skill, you'll be fine. If you don't, well, that's just part of the fun. It's certainly not a challenge for everyone, but I think it's one of the most genius challenges I've ever seen in a game, and it's achieved by something as simple as a freaking font change. Also, while it's not an official part of the game by any means, Desktop Goose is a hilariously good fit with Kingsway. Like, I think it's literally the best game to play with Desktop Goose enabled. It completely fits the Kingsway aesthetic, randomly having windows pulled out onto the screen is a great way to add challenge to Kingsway, and having to outrun an angry goose with your cursor is a fun challenge during a fight. Unfortunately, closing the windows the goose creates boots you to your desktop, so you have to alt-tab every single time. And this also causes causes you to use the tab shortcut in Kingsway, which only makes it even more annoying. So, if you're going to play Kingsway with Desktop Goose enabled, you will probably have to play in windowed mode, which I realize is probably a deal breaker for some. In the end, I'd say I only have one complaint regarding Kingsway. There's not enough of it! And I think that's a good thing in a sense, but I feel like there's still so much more that could have been done with the concept. Like, imagine if there are more enemies with unique gimmicks. You could have some kind of illusionary sorcerer who teleports around the screen each time they attack, and they would simultaneously summon clones of itself to confuse you. Each clone could have different attack speeds to throw your block timing off, but also clue you in as to which enemy is the real one. The clones wouldn't hurt you on their turn, it's just so it's not painfully obvious which is the real one. What about mischievous gnomes that could cast a spell that causes all of your open windows to move about, making it harder to use your items and potentially creating tons of chaos if you click outside of the battle window. Or a ninja that casts some kind of shadow clone attack that quickly teleports around and has to be dismissed before it inflicts heavy damage. Maybe we could see new status effects like Silenced, which prevent you from using MP-based skills, which would force certain builds to create new contingency plans on the off chance they succumb to the status. An inverse of the status effect, which would only allow you to use MP-based skills, could also be neat. Better yet, we could see more creative status effects like Atrophy, which only allows you to have a certain number of windows open at a time. This would prevent the player from preparing their entire stash of potions and scrolls for a fight. There could be a Chaos status effect, which would randomly highlight windows in the middle of combat, potentially leading to some very messy situations. 
and my personal favorite idea, blindness. The brightness of your screen would be drastically decreased except for a certain radius around your cursor. This could perhaps be partially remedied by certain stats or passive skills. It would make enemy pop-up attacks and traps much more dangerous and really keep you on your toes. All of these would be inflicted like other status effects currently in the game, via a pop-up window enemy attack. That way it's completely the player's fault if they are inflicted with it. The point of all this is to highlight the sheer brilliance of Kingsway. The amount of depth that this simple little game contains is utterly astounding. It's one of my favorite game concepts to date, and I would give anything to see it expanded upon. Kingsway is only $10 on Steam, and considering I have clocked 30 hours into this game at the time of writing this, I think that's a more than fair price point. If you're still on the fence, just pick it up during a sale. It can run as cheap as $2. And don't worry, I avoided spoiling too much, so there's still plenty left for you to discover on your own. And if you do already own Kingsway, I hope you can now better appreciate what it has to offer. Clearly, Andrew Marsh put a lot of love and passion into this game, and it really shows. Oh gosh, uh, this is my first big video essay. Um, I've recorded, like, all of this in one sitting. Um, it's taken, like, five hours. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I hope you enjoyed it, and, uh, you can provide, uh, feedback. Um, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Um, I'll try and make more in future. Um, I'm undecided on what I'll produce next, but, uh, hopefully it will be to your liking. Um, please share this video around. Uh, and uh, have a nice day. That's my only other command. Uh, thank you.